on a hill. Near a wood. When nobody goes. Up a track. Through a gate. The food forest grows. With secrets and treasures for everyone's pleasure. And Rob's discover, Rob's discovery. Hello, and welcome back to the Forest Garden. I'm in the cosy yurt this evening. It's rather late at night. <laughs> Do you hear the owls hooting? They're in the big ash tree, just outside there. I'm just getting ready for bed. Got my bedtime drink next to the fire here, just warming up before heading over to the hut. Hmm. I thought it would be the perfect few minutes to share with you the amazing creative work from some various Rob's Discovery fans who have been a great support of the channel over the last couple of years. And I have various things here on the computer they've sent me from, um, well, I'll show you in a minute. There's a poem, there's a picture, a couple of pictures. It's just really kind of them. It's just they're using the channel or the forest garden as their inspiration for, for um, their creative work. For example, there's a lady called Yen Ling Wang who actually saw the garden for herself. She came from Taiwan for a tour of the garden a couple of years ago and in one of the forest garden newsletters one of the very few I managed to send out last year I'll get back on track this coming year I talked about the geese and how because of their vanity they spent many hours a day in the depth of winter admiring their reflection in the solar panels that are essential for my electric thus <laughs> blocking the light. I found a mirror for them eventually that they could look in instead of the solar panels. And that's worked for the, for the year, it's kept them occupied so they don't block the light anymore. And Yen used that picture to create this beautiful watercolour. Look at that. <laughs> there they are. I can almost hear them honking proudly as they preen their feathers with their beaks and stretch their wings out. And a couple of months ago, Yen sent me another picture. She created it digitally this time. She's a really amazing graphic designer, a graphic artist. And I will put a, a link to her Instagram page where you can see more of her work here, somewhere on the screen. But a couple of videos ago, on Samhain, I did a special Halloween storytelling from that book, The Botanical Folk Tales of Britain and Ireland, sitting in this chair just here in the yurt by the fire. And Yen took that story reading as an inspiration to create yet another piece of artwork. Look at that. It's me as a manga character. Very cool. I love the the carved pumpkin in the background on the table and it's even got my Aladdin paraffin lamp there in the foreground and the twinkly fairy lights. She also sent me a time lapse of her creating this artwork. If 
I just play it here? Maybe it's not a time lapse. Maybe she really draws that first. I don't know. It's really interesting how she built up the layers. And finally fills in the shading. <laughs> well, that's far better than many photographs of me, so I might use that as my profile picture somewhere. She does work equally as grand as this, and even grander, and again, you can see it on her Instagram page. Now for something a little different. Back at the beginning of October, I received a message on Instagram out of the blue, and this is what it said. Hey Rob, I'm a big fan and thoroughly enjoy your content. I was introduced to your videos through a friend who is a long time supporter. He's having a birthday next week and I wanted to surprise him with something truly unique. If it's not too much to ask, would you be comfortable taking a quick video recording of you wishing him a happy birthday? It would mean the world to him, as he is truly one of your biggest fans. I hope you had a great weekend, and I look, and I look forward to hearing from you. Keep up the great work. And I wrote back, what's your friend's name, and when is their birthday? And the response, his name is Bonnie, and his birthday is on the 18th of October. His favourite quote from you is, the veil is thinnest. He mentions it all the time from your Mugwort Dreams video when we're at work. If you could throw that in, it would absolutely make his day. So, I did that, and then this friend of Bonnie's, a couple of weeks later, sent me a reaction to the video that I made, and if this goes according to plan, I will play them both split screen side by side so you can see the video that I sent to this friend of Bonnie's that he showed to him and Bonnie's reaction. <laughs> Here we go. Hello, welcome back to the forest garden. It's halfway through October and it's a very special day, a special time of year because we're fast approaching all Hallows Eve, Halloween, one of the four times of year when the veil is thinnest between worlds. But it's also a very special day because it's the 18th of October, so happy birthday, Bonnie! From me, no! yeah, man. Yes! well in the first garden. The geese, ducks and chickens, and all the other creatures. Let me see you again. Ducks. Happy birthday. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> Isn't that just wonderful? That totally made my day when I saw it. Well, I hope you had a good day, Bonnie. I hope you enjoyed that too, everyone. Now, what have we here? Ah, yes. Back in August, a lovely family came to visit the forest garden on one of the summertime tours and they liked it so much that they were inspired to write a poem again the day after they came. I got this message on Facebook and I was really really touched. I ought to have practiced reading it but I haven't read it for a few months so here it is. This is by Ross. Incidentally, Ross is now one of my patrons. 
Down in the garden, by a small winding lane, along a short hidden path and a tree with no name, there are sights to be seen and secrets to be sown, but only for those with a mind to be shown. Down in the garden, where the old souls go, where the honeybees buzz and nectars flow, there are songs to be sung for those in the know, wondrous things like midsummer snow. Down in the garden, where the apples gleam red, where the breeze is cool and soft feet tread, there is wisdom to be had and signs to be read of light dappled leaves and scented flower beds. Down in the garden, by a small winding lane, along a short hidden path and a tree with no name, you'll find a face with a smile worn under a crown of tumble down hair, not golden but brown. Down in the garden, where the wild things grow, where the songbirds sing and glowworms glow, there's a place full of time, a place one calls home, but mostly it rests at peace and alone. Down in the garden, where life lives itself, there is magic to be found in abundance and wealth. Down in the garden, by a small winding lane, along a short hidden path, and a tree with no name, you'll find Rob's Forest Garden and all it contains. Isn't that amazing? Ah, I might use that for the new theme tune maybe. Maybe I could put it to music. What do you think? Do you think it would work well if it was sung? And I think it would go really nicely, hand in hand, with this next imi image, which is by an amazing illustrator called Alessandra. She has an Instagram account where you can see all her work. I believe the name is Takia Art and Magic but I will put it on the screen now, either a link to it or the name properly, so you can find it. But she's very talented, just like Yen and Ross. She's one of my patrons also, and I send them different things all the time, things that I don't put on this YouTube channel. Like I have a crudely hand-drawn map that I give to visitors so they can find this place, because it's very difficult to find. I may show that on the screen now, or at least a portion of it, just to give you an idea. But Alessandra saw this and she created for me. She elaborated on that map. We corresponded a little bit and she asked what kind of things there were to be found around the village, what wildlife there was, and about the features on the map. And she has drawn this incredible map of East Harptree where the forest garden is here it's right in the center and look look at this wouldn't this be brilliant to use this like the camera panning over it as that poem gets read or as the theme tune plays uh, it's got a barn owl swooping down from the corner and it's got East Harptree court it's got all the various ancient orchards of the village and look, it's even got my old green caravan in the middle where the forest garden is and the geese padding around outside and a beehive. And there's, yeah, there's the, um, the harp tree hoard, that treasure chest of Roman gold coins that was found up near the Forestry Commission and the old lead smelting chimney stack and all the pheasants and hares and rabbits of the woods and the clock tower Oh, and the stone circle, the Devil's Coit, that's right, the stone circle at the bottom of the village, to the north. There's a druid wandering there, no doubt who has just performed a ceremony.
I think that is absolutely incredible. So thank you again, Alessandra. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of these pieces of creative excellence. And lovely to see you all again. Well, for you to have watched this, I can't really see you. Well, I can in my mind's eye. Especially you. And you, yes. I can see what you're up to. Okay, well, <laughs> once again, thank you very much for watching. And see you soon. Good night. And Merry Christmas. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.